Hey guys, CG here, and today in our modding tutorials, we're going to be uh, working a little bit on how the items uh, are registered so that we don't have to tell it to render each and every one. And we're going to be learning about NBT data, which is used to store information on items and blocks. Uh, but first, let's clean up this, uh, this class a little bit here. Um, so, I'm going to create a private static final list of item, and I'm going to call this items, and this is going to equal the new array list of item, and it's going to be from java.util.list, so here's our imports. Now this is called generic typing, it just means that anything that's not an item can't go into this list. It's, this is basically an array that can change its size, so it's a lot easier to work with. So here we can just say add i, or uh, items.add i. Now the item is added to this list. And in here we can just say for each item i in items, register render of i we've automatically replaced all of that. So this should still function because it'd be unfortunate if it didn't. Our items should all still have textures. And they still work and everything. Now let's do the same thing to blocks because I'm pretty sure blocks has a register render in there. Yes. Ah. Okay, oh well. Private static final list block blocks equals new array list of the type block. We have to import this from block and list. And then we add after this blocks dot add. I don't know what it's doing. And B for each block B in blocks. We're going to register render of the blocks item. Ah. Okay, so this is actually going to be of the type block base. Because that is how we can get access to the item. Okay, that was a big error report. Ah, that's just a generic error. Uh, something bad happened. Oh well. The item still has a texture, the block still has a texture. All this still works. Minecraft items are still glitchy AF. Uh, so next, we're going to get into NBT items. Now, NBT is great because it allows you to store data on a single instance of an item. Um, and it's one of the reasons we did this, because I wanted to create another item. And now, all we have to do is pretty much just copy that and paste it. Boom, we've got another item in the game, because all of it is done for us. It's added to the list, and then this just says, every item in the list, register the renders of it. So that makes our lives a ton easier. Now, I'm going to create another item, item tutorial, NBT. It's going to have another class, all this fun stuff. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a model for it. Item tutorial, item tutorial, NBT. And this is just going to get its texture from NBT, like that. And then in textures, I'm going to copy the tutorial basic item, open it up, and we're going to do NBT is the color red with a blue box going like that. Let's still make it red though. Now I think that looks pretty snazzy. Um, now we're just going to have to create this class, so item tutorial nbt is now a class, so stop complaining. 
All right, so let's just run the game to make sure this item is correctly uh, registered. Oh, come on, stop doing that. If you get that error, just try uh, clicking the play button again. I don't know what causes it, but something does and something is annoying. Okay, and bang, we have our item.itemTutorialNBT.name. I'll go ahead and give that a name because that name's a tad unreasonable. Okay, it has been assigned a name. Now, um, I'm going to introduce another method to you that comes from the item. And this basically is called whenever you right click on the item. So public item stack on item right click item stack stack world world entity player player. And we make sure to import all this stuff and you'll see we get an error. So just return stack. That's not right. Okay, this method has been completely changed. Let's rewrite this. So it's public action result item stack on item right click item stack stack world world entity player player enum hand and and let's spell that right return new action or actually maybe we can just return stack no no action result item stack stack is that how it's done okay I found it this I really don't like 1.9 all right, so you return new action result enum action result dot success, and then you return stack. Good lord, it used to be much easier, but now it's not. Anyway, let's get over that and get back to the NBT data. Now, uh, first thing you have to do is make sure that the item has the NBT data, so we'll say if we have to check if it's null first. So if stack dot get tag compound is equal to null. So this checks if it's not been set before. Okay, so what we have to do is set our tag compound NBT tag compound like that. There we go. That just makes sure that it's not null when we get it because if it is we're going to have some errors um now let's just say stack dot get tag compound dot set integer clicks that's going to be set to stack dot get tag compound dot get integer clicks plus one We'll only do this if it already has clicks, because if not, then we just create it. Hold on. If stack dot get nbt com you know what? Why don't we nbt tag compound c equals stack dot get tag compound. And let's just replace all these things with C. So it's much neater. C dot has key clicks. Else C dot set integer clicks to one. So basically the way this works is if we already have clicks in here, uh, set its number one higher but if we don't set its number to one because we haven't clicked it before also we gotta go stack dot set and be set tag compound back to C because we edited it edited it after we took it out so then what I wanna do is you know what how about we make this more complicated 
we're going to check if the player is sneaking and if they're not then all right it's text component string things are changing too fast there we go thank the lord good lord Ugh. all right so we're gonna say clicks um, well actually let's say if they've clicked it tell them how many clicks they have plus stack .get tag compound .get integer clicks stack .get tag compound has key clicks else if they don't send them a message saying they have none okay so all this does every time you shift right click the number of clicks you have on your item will go up by one and then if you right click it'll tell you how many clicks you have but if you don't have any it'll change the text to none okay so I right click and we crash now there are many reasons this could happen and I've just seen what it was it was because we never actually checked See, we only checked that if they were sneaking and it was null, then create it. But if we're not sneaking the first time we click it, then it's going to be null, which means we're trying to perform an action on a null object, which will get your game a crash. All right, so I right click, it says clicks none, but it says it twice. Oh boy, this is another thing. Um, I'm going to check if... world dot is remote I think it has to be remote or it doesn't uh, no if it's not remote because we want this to be done on the server side if it's done on the client side when you log out it won't actually send the data to the server to save and then when you log back in your data will be gone or data I change how I say it every second but if you say is not remote, it means the world is on a server. So save all the data, uh, data, 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 data. Save it there. So if we right click, we have no clicks. Shift right click a few times. We right click, we have nine clicks. And if we log out and log back in and we right click, we still have nine clicks. So let's shift right click a few more times. Now we've got 42 clicks. Ooh, that was fun. So, thank you guys for watching this Minecraft tutorial. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and leave a like, and if you enjoy my content, go ahead and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.